What is going on YouTube? Fascinating graveyard. Today, I'm at the St. Raymond Cemetery once again, the Bronx, New York. I'm gonna show you the grave of Frankie Lyman. Of course, Frankie Lyman, the lead singer of the Teenagers. It wasn't always that way though. So Frankie was born September 30th, 1942 in Harlem, New York. Uh, father was a truck driver, mom was a maid. However, I'm guessing one of them lost their job because uh, when he was about 10 years old, he got a job as a bag boy to just help uh, make ends meet. But as the saying goes, and he was at a talent show and noticed that there was these guys they were singing songs by the name of the Coupe de Vils. Now, Frankie did a little bit of singing before, because that was popular. I mean, singing doo-wop, that was like singing rap. That was like the rappers of today or the doo-wop guys of the 40s and the 50s. So, you know, he links up with this guy, Herman Santiago, who was the lead singer of the Coupe de Vils. And, you know, they would sing at, you know, on the street corners. They would sing at school. And what have you so they got this audition right to sing a song that they wrote one of the friends of the band members gave him some letters love letters that his girlfriend had written him just to give them motivation because these guys they just couldn't figure out what kind of song they should write and they maybe had writer's block or whatever so from those letters is how the song why do fools fall in love came to be so they have a rehearsal and at that time Herman Santiago was the lead singer and I think Frankie was only 13 years old and he was late to the audition and you know Frankie was like well I'll sing the song because I already know it so he sang the song and everybody loved him and it was from then on that it was decided that he would be the lead singer and you know he was like the little cute kid the other guys were a little bit older than him and he was the most popular one it was almost like the jackson five thing where michael is the singer and you know just because he's so you know small and cute and blah 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 that he just becomes quote unquote the man and it became very popular that was their first big single and they had another uh, another hit too, uh, I Want You To Be My Girl. Uh, that made the, I believe, uh, the number six on the Billboard Pop Charts. And they had a four other top 10 R&B singles, uh, Who Can Explain, I Promise To Remember. Hey, who knows I'm not a juvenile delinquent. I used to be one, I used to be one of those guys. Uh, Frankie was very, very popular as a teenager. Uh, 14, 15, 16 years old, this guy was banging girls twice his age. <laughs> this guy was doing it, as uh, I like to say anyways. And uh, I guess, you know, Frankie got a little bit too big for his britches because they split in 1957. Uh, the teenagers went their way, Frankie went his way, and they never really got, uh, they never really reached the level of popularity that they did when they were together. So they were doing their own things and, you know, Frankie, it was probably not known at the time, he was a very uh, hardcore drug addict. He loved heroin. Uh, he got into trouble uh, with the law a few different times over it. And uh, in 1960, I think it was 1965, he got arrested for heroin possession. And the judge told him either you go into the army or you go to jail. And I believe he was facing uh, quite a bit of time in prison. So he chose the army. So he joins the army and that lasts for a little less than a year. And he goes AWOL so he can book, you know, like gigs at different nightclubs around the area. So they have eventually catch him, they arrest him. <laughs> he does a little time with the pokey and they gave him a dishonorable discharge. And, you know, Frankie just never really reached that level of success 
uh, that he did when he was younger. Uh, he did have that uh, remake of that one song. Uh, God, what was it called? Uh, it was the... Uh, I think it was a Bobby Day song. Oh, pretty little... Uh, uh, what is it? A little bitty pretty one? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whoa, 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 oh, 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 anyways, I'm sorry guys, I gotta stop singing on this channel, it's, people are gonna start unsubscribing, little bitty pretty one, don't you love watching those, don't you love watching black performers perform on those old television shows and then when the camera pans on the on the white girls, all of a sudden they get super uncomfortable because they forgot that their mother's gonna watch the TV show and they don't wanna be caught having fun listening to a black guy sing. That is hilarious. That is hilarious. Yeah. He died February 27, 1968 at the age of 25 of a heroin overdose. He had been clean for a few years and, you know, it's, uh, I know the hardest part of kicking heroin is like the physical uh, withdrawals because you get so sick. But then after you get past that, everything is just a mental, I believe. So uh, just a, a true talent, to say the least. And just a very uh, fascinating story of how this kid was so young and so popular. And just if he would have just stayed with them, you know what I mean? Uh, but who knows? Uh, anyways, uh, rest in peace to uh, Frankie Lyman. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed my... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm.